Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at Lionel's latest legacy-equipped SD40-2 diesel. Lionel made this latest rendition of the SD40-2 available in their 2012 Volume 1 catalog, and these engines started arriving fairly quickly in stores around late spring, early summer 2012. They've got the CSX road name that you see here, and they've got several others, including Norfolk and Western, Burlington Northern, Frisco, Chicago Northwestern, and MKT. For each road name, they've got two powered units and one non-powered unit. Let's go ahead and start things off with some facts and figures for this model. The length is just over 16 inches. It's about 18 inches if you count the couplers. It weighs in at 5 pounds. It's got 1 pound, 13 ounces of pulling power. And the minimum curve needed to run this engine is 031. Under the hood, this engine features Lionel's legacy control system as well as legacy rail sounds. There are three ways you can run this engine. The preferred way to run it is with Lionel's legacy command system as that will give you access to the most features on the engine. If you've got Lionel's older TMCC command system, you can run it with that as well, although you won't get access to quite as many features as you would with legacy. And then finally, you can run the engine conventionally with just a transformer and some track. Okay, that takes care of the stats. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the great details and features of this model. On the front of the engine, we've got a nicely done pilot. It's not the most detailed pilot I've ever seen, but it's okay. We've got some separately applied MU hoses and some nice cast-in detail. There are drainage holes in the steps, which is a nice touch. There's a hinged deck plate right here. And then we've got a nice metal chain between the handrails and operating ditch lights. The truck side frames are, of course, die-cast metal, and they're pretty nicely done. My favorite thing about them is that there's actually some legible signage on the trucks. The fuel tank is also die-cast metal and is pretty nicely done with some hand-painted details here. Up on top, we've got safety tread on the walkways. There are lots of separately applied metal grab irons all over the engine, as well as metal handrails. On the hood, we've got operating marker lights. Up on the cab, there's an operating headlight, as well as lighted number boards. We've also got separately applied windshield wipers and opening windows and doors. The inside of the cab is lighted and includes two hand-painted crew figures. The sides of the engine feature some nice deeply recessed cast-in detail as well as this nice clear sight glass here. And then all over the engine we've got these great legible signs and placards as well as legible builder's plates up on the cab. On top of the engine we've got a nice horn above the cab. Here's the smokestack and there is an operating smoke unit inside to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit. You just take your smoke fluid and squirt it right down the stack. Back here we've got five nicely detailed fans and each fan does feature movable blades and then we've got lots of separately applied metal lift rings back here as well. The controls for the engine as well as the battery compartment are hidden under a panel that's right here on the back of the engine. And while the panel itself is well hidden, which is a good thing, it's a little awkward because there's no clear way to pop the panel off and the instructions are not very clear on how to do this. My first guess was that you would just use these lift rings and pull up on them and pull the panel off. But that's not a good idea because what happens is the lift rings will just pull right out of the body and then you'll be sitting there with super glue trying to get the lift rings back in like I had to do. The best way that I found to do it is there's a little piece right here and with a little pressure it'll pop off like that. And then you can just take a screwdriver or something else like that and give it a gentle pry and the panel will pop right off like that. And then once again inside you've got the battery compartment, the run program switch, the Odyssey speed control switch, and the smoke unit on off switch. And then to replace the panel just pop it back in place like that. And then take that little piece and stick it back in like that. Here's a look at the back of the engine. Just like on the front, we've got MU hoses on the pilot, as well as one more hinge deck plate and another metal safety chain. Up on the engine, we've got an operating reverse light and lighted number boards, and we've also got operational marker lights. And then we've got some additional separately applied metal grab irons. And then last but not least, here's that big back porch that the SD40-2s are so famous for. Okay, the last thing we're going to do before we start this engine up is BFIMO. Best feature in my opinion. In my opinion, the best feature on the engine is the sound of the prime mover. It's got this great low-end growl to it that I really like, and it gets even better when you increase the labor intensity on the Legacy Remote. It adds lots more bass to it, and it really makes the engine thunder down the rails. So in my opinion, the best feature of the SD40-2 is the sound of the prime mover. 
Okay, we're just about ready to go. Now, if you recall, earlier I said that Lionel made two powered units and one non-powered unit for each road name. I've got both of the CSX powered units here for this demonstration. So let's go ahead and start them up and take them for a spin. Dispatcher here. Do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Copy that, dispatcher. Starting up the engine. Out. This engine has a very interesting sounding horn. I'm not sure if I like it or not. It's unlike any other horn that I have in my collection. It kind of has a haunting sort of sound to it. Let's give it a listen. Now what's interesting is that if you barely tap on the horn button on the Legacy Remote, you'll get a sound that sounds almost like a violin. Check it out. Pretty neat. Here's the bell. Here's some of the generic Lionel crew talk sounds. Can I get a green light? Over. Affirmative, the track is yours. Over. Thank you much. Cleared outbound. Out. Dispatcher here, you are cleared outbound. Over. Copy, we have that clear. Out. Now it seems that people are really split about the crew talk thing. Some people like crew talk, some people don't. I like it, I think it makes the engine more fun to run, but I realize it's not the most realistic crew talk in the world. But if you're the kind of person that has a problem with it and doesn't like the crew talk, there's an easy solution to that. Just don't use it. As I mentioned earlier, this engine has operating marker lights. If I put the engine into reverse, there they are on the front of the engine. And then if we go forward again, there they are on the back of the engine. Okay, so now let's go ahead and roll it out.
Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. This is a good solid diesel engine and it is sure to be a workhorse on your three rail O scale layout. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, they retail for right at $530, although if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a pretty sizable discount off that retail price. And if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can call them at 770-339-7780 or find them on the web at www.legacystation.com. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.